So now we'll go over to the Quorum PP3010 and show you how easy it is to prepare a standard cryo sample. So here we are at the NMRC in Nottingham with Dr. Chris Parmenter, and he's just going to demonstrate producing a very, very simple cryo sample. First of all, he selects the um, stub hole that he's going to use. He then inserts it into the shuttle and clamps it, making sure that it is held firmly. He then puts some cryo glue into the shuttle and then takes his cut plant specimen and puts it into the glue. So having loaded the sample onto the shuttle, Chris is now going to fit the shuttle onto the transfer rod. This is a simple 90 degree bayonet. He then stops pumping the slush and vents it so the slush turns back to a liquid. And now we will plunge the sample rapidly and smoothly into the slush nitrogen and wait for the sample to finish cooling. And we slide the transfer pot back down onto the slusher, ready to pump the sample for a transfer to the airlock. So now we're pumping out the slusher to create our vacuum to do the vacuum transfer onto the airlock. Just before the nitrogen goes back to slush, we retract the insertion rod into the transfer pot housing and close the paddle valve to seal the sample into the transfer pot. Then we vent the slusher and transfer the pot over onto the preparation chamber. So once the transfer pot is attached to the preparation chamber, we pump out the airlock and once that reach the right, reaches the right vacuum, it then allows us to open the valve and we slide the specimen in onto the cold stage in the preparation chamber. We're now ready to sublime, fracture or coat, depending on what you want to do. So here we can see our defined sublimation curve with one of the recipes we have chosen here. The green line is what we defined, and the red line is what the sample actually experienced during the sublimation. All this curve can be saved and then used later in the report. And now that we've finished the sublimation, you can see the temperatures come back down to normal. We can then go on to coat the sample if we want to. Now we've sublimed the sample, we'll go to sputter to coat the sample. Here we see it defaults to the last recipe we used, but we can choose different recipes from these quick choice bars and we're ready to go we've got the when we're happy with the parameters we just have to press start and then the coating happens fully automatically so now the system is bleeding in the argon into the system and monitoring the vacuum till it gets to the right level and then once it sees the argon pressure being correct it will then turn on the high voltage and look for the current to start and now the argon pressure has reached the right value. We can see now it has struck the plasma and we're now beginning to count down for the coating. And once it has coated for the correct time, it then pumps away the argon lines and goes back to system ready. So we can now close the sputter window and transfer the sample into the microscope. So once the sample has been fractured, sublimed and coated, we then press the transfer button to enable the SEM valve to be opened and we transfer the sample into the SEM cold stage. Now once the sample's on the cold stage, we retract the transfer rod and close the SEM valve. And we're now ready to start imaging the sample. When we come to the end of the day or the end of your session, then we'll take the sample out of the microscope and we will then uh, put the specimen uh, exchange into the storage 
And then to shut the system itself down is very, very simple. We just press shut down on the screen. The system asks you if you're sure you want to do that. And then it asks you to remove the heat exchanger from the liquid nitrogen at the back. Uh, so it's simply lifted out and put into its little storage bracket on the side. Once you have done that, you just confirm you've taken out the um, heat exchanger and the system shuts itself down. So it literally takes less than a minute to shut the system down.